Like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Opinion The CDC's mask mandate for flights needed to go leftists predictably criticized the ruling from a federal judge on Monday voiding the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's mask mandate in transportation settings. They're wrong. The decision was sound not only as a matter of law, but also a matter of public policy. Judges decide legal questions, not political ones. That means critics of a judge's ruling must first examine the merits of their reasoning. On that, U.S. District Judge Catherine Kimball Mizell had to decide two separate questions, whether the CDC had the legal power to issue its mandate, and if so, whether it exercised such power within the bounds of the Administrative Procedure Act. The judge properly ruled against the CDC on both counts. As John Hindiraker, a lawyer writing at the Powerline blog, cogently explains, the CDC has no statutory authority to issue rules affecting national public health, so the agency instead relied on a vague power to issue rules pertaining to sanitation as the legal basis for its sweeping mandate. Mizell's ruling carefully parses the law and finds that national masking mandates to prevent the spread of disease are not measures to enhance sanitation. The CDC also failed to follow the law in terms of how it issued its mandate. The Administrative Procedure Act requires agencies to allow for public notice and comment on proposed rules to ensure that the rulemaking power delegated to agencies is not carried out in secret. It also preserves some type of democratic input akin to what occurs in Congress, which alone has constitutional authority to pass laws. The CDC issued its mandate without any notice and comment period. While this might have been acceptable in the early, emergency phase of the pandemic, it was clearly not acceptable to bypass this democratic requirement as the health crisis stretched into its second and third years. If lawmakers wanted a mask mandate for flights, they could have simply passed a law that gave the CDC legal authority to issue the rule. Also, they could have amended the Administrative Procedure Act to waive notice and comment in discrete cases such as in a pandemic. Congress summoned the will to pass a series of pandemic relief bills, but never saw fit to make either of these changes. The fact it chose not to has clear consequences. The judge's ruling also makes sense policy-wise at this point in the pandemic. Mask requirements are significant infringements on personal liberty and ought to be employed only in extreme circumstances. Two years ago, COVID-19 cases were overwhelming hospitals, and there were few effective treatments for those who fell ill. Neither is the case today, thanks to the development of vaccines and advanced therapy options. The limited public health gains from the CDC's mask mandates are easily outweighed by the increased freedom people would have by being able to go maskless. This is especially true when considering how small those gains likely were. The CDC, unlike some European health authorities, did not establish substantive guidelines for the types of masks that qualified, yet it's clear that not all masks provide the same protection against the spread of viruses. The cloth masks that people commonly wear provide only limited value in preventing spread. A serious mask mandate would have required people to use high-quality respirators, such as N95 masks. While the CDC recommends such masks, the fact that it never imposed such a mandate is one reason its rule was increasingly derided as covered theatre by critics. That sort of mockery is never good for the rule of law. The COVID-19 pandemic was a terrible tragedy, but tragedies should never be used as justifications for blithely casting aside democratic norms and the rule of law. Mizell's ruling rightly protects those sacred principles and should be praised, not scorned.